gives them the same learning in two different contexts. So we'll take them to where the stones are, and then for the second verse, we'll move on to where the bushes are and break twigs off the tree. On the way, first, I found a stone. If we just gave it to Christopher to feel, he might think that a stone is anything that's heavy. Heavy! So we get him to feel it, feel its roundness. It's round. If I ask Christopher what something is, he may well tell me it's a stone. But if another adult asks him or someone he's not so familiar, he won't respond. So it's about transferring learning. I picked some lavender growing by my feet. If we gave him lavender to feel, he might get the sense that lavender is just something that is rough. Oh, is that lovely, Chris? Are you smelling the... Lavender. Whereas if he smells it and feels it and holds it and looks for it, he gets more of an idea of what lavender is. I would like Christopher to find the lavender. Good boy, well done, Christopher. I wonder if he can do it again. Joe, for example, is extremely good at picking up an object and exploring it in a tactile way. Sharp and gritty gravel was the last thing that I found. I we also encourage him to look at and to smell the object so that he is getting a sense of the whole object. And made a lovely sound. There's a lot of pattern and a lot of repetition and we have focused, as you probably noticed, very much on the rhythm using sharp and gritty gravel. Sharp and gritty gravel. Sharp and gritty gravel. Sharp and gritty gravel. One of the earliest reading skills is being able to sequence. So we use the tactile cards to prompt the students to remember the object from each verse. First I found a stone lying on the ground and we encourage them to order those, and we encourage them to order them in a left-to-right sequence. Could you pick up the stone? In the same way that reading and writing would be. <laughs> I was very pleased with today's lesson. I think it was probably one of the better sessions. All of the students were on task, all of the students were in the session, and all of the students were involved in the session. Well done, Hina, fantastic! Uh, Annie spent a lot of time throwing her tactile cards on the floor because she's telling me that she's no longer interested in that task. I'd like you to pick up the cards. <laughs> Who do you think's going to win this one? <laughs> Annie's buzzing, we call it. Um, Annie generally buzzes when she's happy. She enjoys the vibrotactile feedback she gets from it. Many autistic children constantly crave stimulation because their receptors aren't working in the same way as ours, so you might see them slapping themselves or doing this sort of thing. Annie. Well done, Annie. When she wants to, she is able to do some quite complex tasks. She can match, she can sort, but it's very much on her terms. If these students were not working one-to-one, -one, they wouldn't be working. And th there's... None of them could be left to get on with tasks on their own. I think Joseph should get a certificate because he kept asking for a drink. Joseph, that, Joe? did you want a, a drink? Yeah. A it was drink. a very good lesson. Oh. Joseph's coming along really well with his signing to the point where yesterday he just ate us out, he just signed for food all day, which is fantastic, which is what we want him to do. For Joe, who is very hyperactive, the fact that he sat for over 40 minutes altogether was magnificent. And even on top of that, he was doing some very active learning. He was mimicking signs, he was interacting, he was vocalising. Well done, Joseph! That's a new sign for Joseph. Aidan, can you put this on lavender? That's Aidan's vision fluctuates and 
when it's a particularly noisy session, which it can be with four LSAs talking to four other students, it can be quite distressing for Aidan. And Aidan was very good. Aidan matched his cards. Aidan was congratulated on several occasions during the morning. Aidan, good boy. Can you put this on the stick? Oh, good boy. Dick. Oh, wow. Christopher is picking up new signs on a daily basis and we're getting quite excited about that. So we're focusing on that with Chris and I was very pleased with his signing. He signed stick and was congratulated for it. I have more signs. Can you show me stick? Oh, well, well done. Christopher oh. is incredibly motivated by sound and vibration, in particular vibration. We think that's probably because he can pinpoint the location of vibration and it's more difficult for him to pinpoint the location of sound because his hearing loss is uneven and we rely on stereo hearing to pinpoint sound. He loves his foot spa and we use it as a motivator. His break time is his leisure time and if he wants to sit and hug the foot spa then we're more than happy for him to do that. Nobody else is particularly keen on the foot spa. On my washing line, drying in the sun. When you sing or use a very sing-song voice, you're covering a lot more frequencies than you're covering with a speaking voice, so it gives hearing-impaired students a better chance. What did Aidan do that was clever? It started with Aidan, whose LSA, when he did something good, would sing Aidan's clever, Aidan's clever. And we realised that he always knew he was being praised when that song was sung. Aidan's clever, 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 Aidan's clever. So we made up clever songs for all of the other students and found that we got a fantastic response from them and they know that they're being sung to, that it's their special song, that they're being praised and everybody is singing to them. Music is innate and its similarities to language are endless and we find music is a big way in for things like turn-taking, expressing emotion, mimicking. <laughs> We start the session by, by playing the gong, so it's just to introduce the sound of the gamelan. The gamelan is a big orchestra of percussion instruments and it's from Indonesia. So welcome to the gamelan. Are you ready to listen? Traditionally in the gamelan, the gong plays at the start of a cycle and the gongs have the biggest vibration and resonance uh, and the sound is so special and so beautiful, it's, I feel it's a nice way to start the session. We know that Christopher really likes the vibration and he loves the gongs, he really, really loves them. There was some wonderful communication going on. He asked for more. Now, he won't do that unless he's very motivated. We were able to use his interest in the gong to get him to understand that he can ask for things he wants by signing and to reinforce that understanding. More? Yes, more, good boy. Hina was finding the session very difficult and was upset, but she remained in the session and was interested in the gong and was able to put her hand on the gong and feel it vibrating. <laughs> I don't think she would have stayed in the session had there not been sound and vibration. So again, with our constant aims to keep Hina on task and involved in a session, um, there were a couple of points at which I wondered whether to stop the session because Hina was finding it difficult. She's not a happy bunny. With Annie, things take time. I think she was experiencing the sound and enjoying the sound, I felt. I didn't feel that she was distressed. 
after the vibration had really died down, Annie um, vocalised at the end and Christopher did. And we're not saying that's, that's definitely because they heard, but if that happened continuously, you'd, you'd feel that there's some connection. And there's obviously a lot of communication and enjoyment that, that comes out of experiencing music. Uh, getting a dialogue going with instruments in here is an awful lot easier than getting a dialogue going anywhere else. For example, a student will hit. If you then mimic their hit, they will be interested and they might hit again. So you hit again, and already you're teaching them a lot about turn-taking. If you copy them, they often are aware of it and find it amusing and enjoy the fact that they are getting you to do something and you're immediately teaching them a lot about mimicry and its value. There's a universal understanding of music. We all agree about what is discordant and what isn't. We all agree that a minor chord sounds very sad and we understand when music is happy or funny. We can play students very sad music and say, this is sad, this feels sad. You may have noticed that a lot of the time when Christopher was laughing, we're telling him, Christopher, you're happy, you're laughing. We're able to communicate things with our students in a way that language can't because they're not able to access it. If they are angry, they can tell you that by the way they're playing. If they're happy, they can tell you the same thing. Many of our students don't understand their feelings and certainly couldn't put a name to them. You can teach them a lot about their own feelings. I want them to have that glorious multi-sensory experience that taking part in music is. The structures that we use up here are really, really simple structures and they could be used with classroom percussion instruments as well. Just a simple start signal and a simple stop signal and everyone playing is a really good place to start and everybody can have a go at that. You don't need to have a music degree, so don't be afraid. For me, the Gamelan session is a wonderful and useful place to put learning in because they are more able to tolerate it because it's very motivating for them. It can be very stressful with children with challenging behaviour and as long as you understand that you don't take it personally, you can get through the day. Every day is different. Things that the students will do on one day, they won't do the next day, and you can have one day where you're as high as a kite and another day where you wonder why you're here at all, frankly. It takes a long time to get there, but when you do get there, it's extremely rewarding. I just love it. In the same way as mainstream teachers are able to celebrate noticeable and larger achievements, we are able to celebrate every tiny step that our student takes, and we do, we celebrate every one of them. A-M-A-I-S and Annie is her name. Well done, Annie. Well done, everybody. Uh...